Is that you, Roger? Yes, Father. I was very kind of you, sir, but I've just come in from Raga and I'm a bit grubby. I think I ought to go and have a shower first, sir. Well, pour me a cup. There's a good chap, would you? Certainly, sir. Yes, of course. Thank you. <clears throat> How was school today? Oh, much as usual. Thank you, sir, but I, I caught someone having a crafty smoke behind the wooden buildings. Had to give him rather a ticking off. Such a filthy habit, you know, sir. It's a filthy habit, Roger. Yes. There we are, sir. Now, if you'll Thank you. excuse me. Uh, Roger? Yes, sir? Um... Sit down. Roger, your mother and I were having a bit of a chat the other day, and she thought it might be a good idea if I was to have a bit of a chat with you. Um, a bit of a chat, sir? A bit of a chat, yes, Roger, just um, a bit of a chat. What about, sir? Well, there's nothing to be worried about, Roger. It's just that... Um, well, to be perfectly frank, how old are you? Well, to be perfectly frank, sir, I'm coming up to 18. Just coming up to 18? Well, on the verge. On the verge of 18. Sir. Yes, well, I thought it might be a good idea to have a bit of a chat now, because I remember from my own experience that it was when I was just, you know, coming up to 18. On the verge. On the verge of it. <laughs> that I first began to take a a serious interest in the, um, in the opposite, um, the opposite number. <laughs> now, I don't know, Roger, if you know anything about the method whereby you came to be brought about. Well, sir, some of the boys at school say very filthy things about it, sir. <laughs> this is what I was worried about, and this is why I thought I'd have a bit of a chat and explain absolutely, frankly, and openly the method whereby you and everybody in this world came to be. <laughs> Roger, in order... In order for you to be brought about, it was necessary for your mother and I to do something. In particular, it was necessary for your mother, it was necessary for your mother to sit on a chair. To sit on a chair which I had recently vacated and which was still warm from my body. And then something very mysterious, rather wonderful and beautiful happened. And sure enough, four years later, <laughs> you were born. Now, there's nothing unhealthy about this, Roger. There's nothing unnatural. It's a beautiful thing in the right hands, and there's no need to think less of your mother because of it. She had to do it, she did it, and here you are. <laughs> well, sir, it's very kind of you to tell me. One thing actually slightly alarms me. Um, I was sitting in this very chair yesterday, sir, and I vacated it, and the cat sat on it while it was still warm. <laughs> and sh should we have it destroyed? It's a lovely chair, Roger. And the cat, sir. Destroyed? No, no, Roger, you don't understand. This thing of which I speak can only happen between two people who are married. And you're not married. Um, not yet anyway, sir. Not to the cat in any case. <laughs> well, Roger, now you have this knowledge about chairs and warmth, I hope, I hope you'll use it wisely. Sir. And take no notice of your school friends, or what Uncle Bertie may say. <laughs> Dirty Uncle Bertie, they call him. <laughs> Dirty Uncle Bertie, and they're right, Roger. Your Uncle Bertie is a dirty, dirty man. He's been living with us now for 40 years, and it does seem a day too much. <laughs> you know, if it hadn't been for your mother, Roger, I'd, I don't know where we'd have been. She's the only person who can really cope with Uncle Bertie. She's the only one who can really deal with him. I don't know if you realize this, Roger, but your mother even has to sleep in the same bed as Uncle Bertie to prevent him getting up to anything in the night. <laughs> if only there were more people like your mother, Roger. 
Well, I'm, I'm very pleased that you have told me this, sir, because, as I say, I'm very glad I don't have to believe all those filthy things that the boys at school say. And only yesterday, Uncle Bertie said to me... Take no notice of Uncle Bertie, Roger. He's a sick, sick man, and we should feel sorry for him. Well, I'll, I'll try, sir. <sighs> well, thank you, sir. Um, I wonder if I should take a cup of tea up to Mother while I, it's still... I, I wouldn't do that, Roger. She's upstairs at the moment, coping with Uncle Bertie. <laughs> Poor Uncle Bertie. Poor Uncle Bertie. <laughs> <laughs>